This video is about to get nerdy, 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 nerdy. So buckle up. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. And over the last few setting the scenes videos, I've gotten a couple of comments from folks. Actually, I feel like it's even more than a couple. I've gotten a decent amount of comments from folks asking me to go over my scatter terrain collection. Now, that is a level of nerdy that I get very excited about, but I worried that I don't know if like all of y'all would want to hear about my scatter terrain. But then I thought to myself, hey, self, you like talking about scatter terrain, so just talk about it and hopefully the people like it. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. I'm going to be going over my scatter terrain collection, as simple as that sounds. I'm gonna nerd out about it and hopefully you get to nerd out about it with me. And I'm gonna also ask some very important questions. And this is actually where we're gonna start. So I'm, I'm ready to dive into it right now. What is scatter terrain? So obviously I have all kinds of trees and logs and bushes. That stuff certainly is scatter terrain to a degree. Are buildings scatter terrain? Fencing and that sort of thing feel like scatter terrain to me. But really when I personally think of what scatter terrain is, I'm not thinking about bigger set pieces like a tree or a building. I'm thinking about little teeny tiny unnecessary details that you're using to just fill the scene up and make it feel alive. Now, I don't actually have a crazy amount of this stuff. It's one of my favorite things to buy when I see it out in public. I don't craft a lot of it either because it's so tiny and fiddly, but I feel like it's the difference between a mediocre scene and a really awesome looking scene, a scene that looks unlived in compared to a scene that is super lived in. So that's what we're gonna go over. I'm gonna pull out my two crates of scatter terrain, and I'm just gonna go through it one by one, talk a little bit about each thing, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's dive into the boxes and go down to the table. All right, so here we are in my crate of little things. Now, I try to, keyword here is try, to organize them in alphabetical order so they're easy for me to find. So for example, arcane table, and then barrels, and then bookcases. This was supposed to be braziers, but uh, obviously you can see that other things have started to collect in there. Um, campfire, chains, chairs, crates, chests, cabinets, fire, firewood, kegs, treasure. This is an odds and ends, and then tables down here. So first thing is first, I have this little arcane table that I got from WizKids forever ago. I like this thing because it's a three piece. So you could just use it with this. You could just use it with this. You could use it with this, or you could use it with none of it, or you could put just those two down, or I, I like things that give me versatility like that, and this is something that I just would really struggle to craft. The next thing that I have is a whole slew of barrels, and I have so many different ones, and some of them are unpainted, and some of them are painted poorly, and some of them are really cool, like this water washing clothes bin, that's nice. But anyhow, I. Barrels are a perfect example, like crates, and we'll kind of get there in a minute, but I think that they're really, really great options, you know, for putting out scatter train. They fill space well. Bookcases. This is gonna be some stuff that I bought. This is gonna be some stuff that I've crafted. This is going to be some stuff that I've combined of things that I've bought and I've crafted. One thing that I will say is I never feel like I have enough bookcases. It just feels to me like you want to fill a room to make a library, so you could really use a lot of those instead of just having a couple little pieces. Now, in the brazier bin, I've got, you know, these two braziers, but I've also got a cauldron, which is a fun little thing that I ended up buying and then ended up adding the green goop to the top of it. And then the last thing that I've got is this little bird cage that I made very early into my time of crafting. It looks like crap, but I've found a surprising amount of uses 
for it, for like to trap animals or bird cages or whatever. Next, we've got the camping stuff. So camping stuff I have in a bunch of little pieces. Oh, they can't get them to come out. Okay, so I've got like the little spits for like cooking stuff over the fire. I've got a couple of little tripods that I've got. Then inside my little camping thing here, I've got little bedroll type situations and little fires, useful. Next, I have chains, things that I bought from WizKids. Chairs, just like the barrels. I've got so many of these. I mean, just an absolute ton. Really, really make a big difference around tables though, I will say. Take the time to put the little chairs out because they make a huge visual difference. I'm gonna talk about crates for a second here because I think that crates are maybe the most important thing of all of my scatter train. The types of crates that I have are some little things that I got out of old American Civil War sets from forever ago. Bones pieces that came out of Bones miniature boxes. I have a bunch of crates in multiple sizes that I actually had a friend 3D print for me because again, crates are just terribly useful. And then lastly, my favorite crates, I think, are these that, again, I believe I bought from WizKids, and they have the little removable tops so you can put stuff inside. Crates, I feel like, go in literally every scene. They go in bandit warehouse scene. They go in camp scene. They go in house scene. They go in fancy manor scene. They go in poor neighborhood scene. Almost any place where there's people, there will be crates and storage options, so crates and barrels just go with everything in a way that kind of chests do but with chests I find like the players see a chest and they're like oh I go investigate it because there's probably loot in there I try to save that effect for only when I'm really wanting the players to go look for a chest as far as cabinets go I have a bunch of these little like 3d printed cabinets Nothing terribly exciting here, but they're useful in setting up a scene sometimes. This is actually more spell effecty than actual scatter terrain, but little fire bits. For firewood, I have a bunch of different firewood variants. So I have all of those here. Next, I've got kegs. Kegs are perfect for in scenes, but I've also found them really useful in campfire scenes as well. Does it make a whole lot of sense that the people who are camping would lug a keg the whole way out to their campsite? Maybe not, but I feel like they add a little zip to a scene. Treasure. So I have treasure in piles and in weapon racks. These, I feel like I use the like actual treasure piles less. It just has always felt weird to me that the bad guys would just leave their treasure in piles around on the floor, particularly a pile this big. The littler piles you could put on a table in like a thieves guild or something, but the big pile, that's a lot. And then these weapon racks, again, I got out of a WizKid set. I like these a lot because they fit into a bunch of places where people would have weapons. I'm gonna skip over this one because I'm gonna do a, a little bit more in-depth discussion of this one. So I'm gonna go down here. Here's just tables. Tons of different tables that I have acquired over the years, some big tables, some little tables. You never know when you're gonna need a table. This is one of my favorites. I have this little table and I filled it with water. So the bowl reflects because there's water in it or soup or something. And then, oh, I guess we should talk about this one too. So this is one that I actually got out of a Civil War set, but it has this cool painted battle map on it and a pair of gloves sitting there. That's always neat to set out in like a war room type situation, or maybe the bandits are secretly planning on where they're going to attack next. So here's the little town and all that stuff. That's super fun. I have a whole bunch of straw and hay bales. I just absolutely love these things. They are really, really, really fun. And you can use them in a lot of different ways, setting up a field scene or even like in a warehouse scene, you can have the hay bales all set up. They could also be seats around a campfire. Love that. All right, so diving into the super, super, super small stuff. So this is just a collection spot that I have for really, really tiny stuff. So for example, like here's sacks, I've got some podiums that could be put up, I've got bird baths, I've got little teeny tiny backpacks. 
that are really fun. Little coiled up ropes. Literally, there is so much stuff in here, little piles of clothes. This is the stuff that is so fiddly and little that I don't mess with it a whole lot unless I'm really trying to spice a scene up. But having a bunch of little things like super teeny tiny little buckets or little plates of food always can help to spice up your scene. But this is my smaller stuff. This is probably gonna be the longer of the two little scatter terrain tours because this is the stuff that really gets most of the time to shine on the table as super tiny spice up a scene scatter terrain. Moving on to my medium and big sized scatter terrain. So I tried to organize this in the same way. I've got bars, beds, cages, uh, columns, I guess is what I called these. Then I have cisterns. Then I've got uh, cave stuff. Then I've got statues. I've got thrones, wells, fencing, and torture racks. Now these aren't necessarily in, uh, you know, alphabetical order. The bar stuff that I made was I just made this very, very, very simple little modular bar so that it makes a little modular bar. Good for in scenes. It also actually works as counter space if you need something in like a manor house or something that has a counter. Then I've got beds. Now, as far as beds go, I've got just a ton of beds. I've got things like these little kind of ramshackle beds, fancier, nice beds that I made forever ago, bunkhouse beds. I've made these like Dwemer Skyrim beds, but also these kind of function like uh, sarcophaguses, sarcophagi <laughs> that could be in a dungeon. Again, multi-use is the name of the game for me in Scatter Terrain. Another thing that I have is this cage that I made forever ago. It's just using toothpicks and XPS foam. You can put the little mini down in there, as well as my like super awesome WizKids iron barred one. For columns, I have some columns that I've made, I have some columns that I have enhanced, and then some columns that I have just bought. These were bought pieces, these were enhanced pieces. They've got a little bit of XPS foam on the bottom to make them stand up a little taller. These are really good. Uh, I, I use them a lot in scenes. When you don't have a ceiling on your 3D terrain, you can use the columns to imply the height of the ceiling. As far as cisterns go, this has just kind of become like a catch for anything that is remotely like water-based or fire pit based, but that's okay. I've got those sorts of things as well as these little like cave pools that I bought from WizKids. For my cave terrain, I've got my stalagmites tights, whichever one these are, <laughs> that I made forever ago on the channel, as well as some that I've bought. This was actually a big, huge crystal I made for one of my D&D games a long time ago. And then way down in the bottom, I have a bunch of crystal terrain that I also have stored down in here. That doesn't get a whole lot of time on the table, but when I need crystals, it certainly comes out. So as far as statues go, I have the statues that I made as part of stuff on the channel. I have those. Another statue that I have in here that I only used once was this flail snail statue that I made. It was like one of the things that I made for Tomb of Annihilation, which was the very first thing I started crafting for forever ago. This was my first time trying to do a sculpt. There is nothing good about this other than the fact that it was one of the first things that I made. And I have yet to find something that would make sense as a flail snail statue in other adventuring that I've done, but it exists. <laughs> as far as thrones go, I have a bot throne that was wonderfully painted by Olivia for me. And then I have two other attempts at thrones. This one was before I had metallic paint. It was one of the pieces that I made and it was a very, very, very poor attempt at painting a metallic without metallics. And then this was one that I made and the attempt was to make something that a mini would sit on. I don't use this a lot because even though the mini fits, like the base fits onto it, it doesn't look in scale. So I never get excited to want to put it out. My two wells, I don't know why I have two. This one looks a little nicer. This was the first one I ever made, but I have them. 
they exist. Really good for obviously town scenes and that sort of thing. For fencing, I have a bunch of 3D printed stone walls. I have pieces that I got from my old Civil War sets. I have these pieces. This I think was actually the first fencing that I ever made, trying to make like little uh, row fencing like that. I have these, which actually never get any screen time. They are from my old Civil War set as well. And then the final thing that I have in here is my torture racks. Always good to have some torture racks handy, you know? You gotta torture somebody up. And there you have it, there is my scatter terrain collection. I, I don't think it's particularly impressive. I don't think that it's something that people would go, he has how much, that's, you know, wild. But it's controlled, it gets me what I need out of it. And I think that that's what's really important. I think that this type of scatter terrain, the little teeny tiny stuff, is really the secret sauce that gets all of my sets to come together at the end. It works like a glue to make a really segmented and separate piece really start to fit together. And I think that what happens a lot is I see a lot of crafters who craft this stuff into their buildings. And then the problem is you can't take them off. You lose versatility. And by me having all of my scatter terrain put into little containers like this that I can put them out when I need and set them up when I need and take them away when I need, that gives me the most versatility when I am making up a set for my D&D game or whatever set I'm trying to make. So. With that said, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. The number one way that you can help a small YouTube channel out is to share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. Like the video, comment down below about a piece of scatter train that I don't have that I need to get my hands on. Love growing the collection and that is one of the best possible ways that I could do it. Keep leaving me suggestions of things that you'd like to see here on the channel. That's how this video got made. If that was you, thank you so much for suggesting it. I'm really excited that I got to do it. Other than that, that's it for this week. Until next week, I'll be seeing you.